Why would I say that if you have celiac disease, being gluten-free is not enough? Well, plenty of reasons. And these are the kinds of conversations I have in my new Undoctored book. Undoctored, Why Healthcare Has Failed You and How You Can Become Smarter Than Your Doctor. I also discuss these things further in the Undoctored blog and websites. How to empower you in health because the doctor is not doing his or her job. So if you have celiac disease diagnosed, either by blood tests or by a biopsy or a scope, etc., uh, you, they, you're told to go gluten-free. What does that mean? It means eliminate foods that contain gluten, this protein shared by wheat, rye, and barley, and you're told to eat gluten-free foods. Sounds logical, right? Wrong. That's an awful answer. Many things wrong with that message. For one thing, there's many other problems in all grains. So grains like wheat, rye, and barley, are seeds of grasses, and they share genetics with other seeds of grasses or grains. So, for instance, the protein gluten, but more properly called gliadin, by the way, in wheat, rye, and barley, looks somewhat like the zein protein of corn. So many people with celiac disease can have their inflammation reignited by eating corn. Even gluten-free foods because they're made with corn starch. Now, that's corn starch, not corn proteins like zein. But the starch is contaminated by residues of zein protein. So gluten-free foods can, in many people with celiac disease, reactivate the celiac inflammation. Isn't that stupid? So why, would you, why were you told to eat gluten-free foods typically made with corn starch? That's often an awful thing to do. So we do several things here. We go grain-free, all grains, not just wheat, rye, barley, but other grains because there's too many shared characteristics, including protein structures that reactivate inflammation. There are also other inflammatory proteins in wheat, rye, barley, and other grains, like wheat germ agglutinin. It sounds like gluten, but it's not related. It's called wheat germ agglutinin because when red blood cells contact this protein, it agglutinates or clots your red blood cells, your, your, your blood. Uh, wheat germaglutinin is in wheat, rye, and barley. It's also in rice, okay? So the rice starch used in gluten-free foods, it's the starch, but it can be contaminated by the wheat germaglutinin of, of rice. So those are just some examples of how it's not just wheat, rye, barley, and gluten that are problems. There are other components in grains that are inflammatory and can either keep the celiac inflammation alive or only permit a partial response when you go gluten-free. So we are grain-free. And you should not eat gluten-free foods because they're contaminated with proteins that, that will re-inflame your intestines. So what does it mean then if you want to have a pizza or cheesecake? Well, you buy, you make, recreate those foods with truly, with healthy benign flours and meals like coconut flour or almond flour. Uh, there are many good flours you can use. We look for the lower carb flours, and you'll see these recreated in lots of the wheat belly and undoctored recipes. How to recreate common foods that are tasty and delicious and do not re-inflame uh, uh, your intestinal tract. You should have been told that you should not indulge in sugars or alcohol, or at least keep them to an absolute minimum, because most people with celiac disease also have dysbiosis. We'll talk about that in a moment. Dysbiosis meaning disrupted bowel flora. And sugars and alcohol are consumed by these unhealthy microorganisms. And they further inflame the intestines when you feed these unhealthy microorganisms sugar and alcohol. And you should have been told that you have dysbiosis, disrupted bowel flora, virtually guaranteed. In the most severe cases, it's called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. See, most of the microorganisms in your colon should be, I'm sorry, in your intestine should be in your colon. But in severe cases, it can ascend up through the 20-some feet of your small intestine, all the way up to the duodenum, even the stomach, and they become infected or colonized by uh, unhealthy organisms. And that's common in people with celiac disease. And they don't doesn't reverse with being gluten-free. You must make a purposeful effort to restore bowel flora. That's a three-part process. We start with a high-potency, multi-species probiotic, preferably 12 or more species, preferably 50 billion would be CFUs, colony-forming units, or more per day. And typically for six months to a year, longer than other people because you have a 
very severe intestinal inflammation. We also fold in fermented foods. Very easy to do, discussed in the undoctored books, uh, undoctored book and many other places, how to ferment vegetables, for instance. Uh, and lastly, prebiotic fibers, the last step, but very, very important. Restoring fibers that nourish microorganisms. So these are absolutely necessary steps for you to restore healthy bowel flora, because if you don't, inflammation does not fully go away. So this is discussed further in the undoctored books, how to do this exactly in great detail. I haven't, the one thing I did not talk about sufficiently in the undoctored book, because it's not as common is the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which I will discuss in future undoctored online discussions. You should have been told that vitamin D needs to be restored. Nearly everybody starts with vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency doesn't cause celiac disease or other autoimmune conditions, but vitamin D deficiency allows other factors to trigger uh, uh, conditions like celiac disease, disease and make it worse. So part of the formula for reversing celiac disease is to correct your vitamin D. So we do so very precisely by checking your 25-hydroxy vitamin D blood level, and we aim for a blood level of 60 to 70 nanograms per milliliter, which typically requires 6,000 units per day, sometimes more when you have intestinal inflammation because some of the vitamin D is intestinally absorbed. This, this likewise discussed in the undocumented book, undoctored websites, as well as the Wheat Belly Total Health book. So there you go. Those are some additional steps that anyone with celiac disease should be aware of, because if you don't address all those issues, you likely will not have a full uh, uh, response. So it's very common, for instance, for some of the celiac, celiac disease, say, I went gluten-free and I'm 70% better, but I still have diarrhea and joint pain and I don't feel quite right and I, my mood's still bad and they have other health problems. So be aware that there are steps beyond the gluten-free diet and that the gluten-free diet, unless you understand what you're doing, can be a corrupt idea. Follow a grain-free diet and choose some foods that need to be gluten-free to avoid cross-contamination. That's true also. But you'll find that you have far better control over your condition.